buildings are responsible for about 40% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. About half of that is residential buildings and half of that is commercial buildings. So, I mean, one way to look at it is uh, about, if about 20% is coming from, from homes and we have a chance to reduce that 20%, you know, we could eventually eliminate that over time. built a home today that was just that just meets the minimum building income that home's going to be obsolete and you know it could be four years five years but at the most 10 years many of the building codes will be requiring zero energy by 2030 or shortly thereafter many conventional homes use fossil fuels directly they use um, Today, primarily, it's natural gas, but in the past, it was petroleum and even coal a long time ago. Um, so they burn these fossil fuels directly to, for space heating and for water heating, primarily. And uh, what a zero energy home does is it seeks to create enough energy for its own needs right on site. Usually that means rooftop solar panels. You know, I had a couple thousand kilowatt hours, you know, that's about 200 bucks worth of electricity that I was giving back to the utility and wasn't getting the advantage of. So I decided to go out and buy a used electric vehicle. And I can use, I can use my, you know, my solar panels to generate enough electricity that I can charge the electric vehicle. Whether you pay cash or, or, or finance in the mortgage, you are going to get uh, a financial benefit the moment you walk in the door. We're at a point right now where we can choose to do energy efficiency to the level of making your home not only use you know, generate as much energy as it uses, but to also generate enough for your vehicles. And that it's really just a matter of choosing to go forward because all the technology is available. And so what I try to do is to help people understand that it's also not only economically feasible, but economically profitable to do that.